All right, today I'm going to prove to you that if we let an object like a block go from the top of a hill and slide down, in the absence of friction, when the block reaches the bottom of the hill, it will be traveling the same speed regardless of the angle of the hill. That is to say, it's only the height of the hill that determines the velocity of the block at the bottom, not the angle. You see, this example usually comes up in early physics when learning about the conservation of energy. I'm going to show you what that solution looks like. But the real explanation as to why it's only the height of the hill that matters goes back to the topics of force and kinematics. So I want to show you that solution too. You see, the conservation of energy says that the potential energy which this block has at the top of the hill is going to turn into kinetic energy as the block slides down the hill. Or mathematically, we could say that the potential energy at the top of the hill is equal to the kinetic energy of the block when it reaches the bottom. Now, potential energy is given by the equation mgh, and kinetic energy by 1 half mv squared. I don't want to get into how to derive those here today. Uh, that's something you can look down in the description. I'll link videos on where those equations actually come from. But if you rearrange these equations and solve for the velocity at the bottom of the hill, you find that the block, when it reaches the bottom of the hill, is going to be traveling at a velocity which is equal to the square root of 2gh, where g is the acceleration due to gravity, and h is the height of the hill. And you'll notice this solution doesn't take into account how steep the hill is or the angle of the hill at all. It's only the height that matters. Now, like I said, this example usually comes up when talking about energy, but I feel like the solution leaves something to be desired in really explaining why this block is going to be traveling at the same velocity, whether we're dealing with a steep hill or a shallow hill. So I want to back up to the topics of force and kinematics to explain what's really going on here. You see, if you look at the free body diagram of a block which is on a hill, in the absence of friction, there's two forces acting on that object. There's the normal force keeping the block from sinking through the hill, and of course there's gravity acting straight down. Now the vector sum of those two forces produces what we'll often call the force down the hill. It's not actually a force down the hill, it's just the resultant of these two vector forces. Now that force down the hill is given by the equation mg sine theta. And again, I'll link down in the description of video, taking a deep dive into exactly where that equation comes from. But it's that force down the hill which causes the block to accelerate. And so looking at Newton's second law, we can say the force down the hill is going to cause the mass of the block to go through some acceleration A. So setting mg sine theta, the force down the hill, equal to ma, we found that the acceleration of the block down the hill is g sine theta. Now, yeah, this is just an equation, but if we stop and think about what it means, this matches up with what people understand intuitively. What this really is telling us is the steeper we make the hill, the greater the rate at which the block will accelerate, which at first seems to go against what this equation over here with energy is telling us. But there's more going on here. You see, as we make this hill steeper, yes, the rate of acceleration of the block is going to increase, but the length of the hill is going to decrease. So see, a real long gradual hill is, of course, long. There's going to be a large displacement of the block. Whereas a short steep hill is, of course, going to be shorter. And so to understand how that length of the hill comes into play here, I want to turn to the kinematic equations. Or more specifically, the kinematic equation Vf squared equals Vi squared plus 2ad. You see, what this equation tells us is the velocity, in this case, of the block at the bottom of the hill if we release it from rest at the top of the hill as a function of the block's acceleration and the length of the hill. Now, we already solved for the acceleration of the block right here. So, subbing that value in, we find the velocity at the bottom of the hill is 2g sine theta multiplied by d, the displacement of the block down the hill, or really, the length of the hill itself. And there's an important thing to recognize here. The length of this hill and the angle of this hill have a relationship. If we were to take this value d and multiply it by the sine of theta, it's going to give us the height of the hill. And what you'll notice with both this long hill as well as this steep hill is that regardless of how long the hill is, this value d sine theta is always going to be h. And so we get this relationship that h is equal to d sine theta. 
and subbing that into our kinematic equation, we find the velocity at the bottom of the hill is given by this function, 2g sine theta h over sine theta. And those signs cancel out. And we find that force and kinematics leave us at the same result that we had over here when dealing with energy. But I like this force and kinematics explanation a little bit better because it takes into account the fact that yes, the block speeds up more rapidly when on a steep hill, but it doesn't have to travel as far. So I hope you found this useful. And on that note, that's all for now.